Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to Piccadilly Signings. Now, I've had one or two people contact me and say, John, have you given up on Engage now? No, not at all. Um, Piccadilly is still going to be the main layout and always be, will be the main layout. Um, never any guarantees in life, and especially what's going on right now. You just don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. So, you know, it is my aim to carry on with that. Um, but having got this built up in the last few days, it would be daft to leave it now and move back onto the end gauge. So I want to get this one up and running before I go back and do anything else upstairs. OK, now moving on, I had um, Francis Rossi contact me the other day from the Corbyn District um, Model Railway Society. And they're only up the road from me, which is a real nice surprise because I didn't realise, I didn't think I'd ever meet many modellers from this county. But he got in touch and said, do you need any track? And uh, I said, I'm not sure at the moment. Let's uh, let me get it laid out on the boards and we'll have a look and see what we see, what I've got, see what I need. And it turned out I needed some more, um, some more track on the traverse section, which is going to go over there. And he said, I'll get it to you. I said, well, do you want anything for it? And he said, no, 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 nothing, nothing. And I am just totally, totally bowled over. It's here. Look, five pieces there of Pico Streamline um, Flexi Track. And wow, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Um, I was thinking, well, where am I going to get it from? Um, because my local model shops are shut. Uh, I've got three local ones. There's one here in Wellingborough and there's another one in Rushton which is about six miles up the road and there's an, a, a bigger one in Northampton on Wellingborough Road if you are familiar with those. All brilliant shops but they're all closed so my only my only place of getting it would be to go to someone like Hattons or Rouse. So Francis you've got me out of a massive hole with this so thank you thank you so much. And I suggest go and check them out. I don't know whether they've got a YouTube channel. And if they have, I'll drop a description below in the, um, yeah, in the description. So have a check out. If they have, subscribe and um, have a watch to see what they're up to. Anyway, what I'm going to do in this video then, my first job is to make the traverse um, using the board I've got here. It does need to be modified slightly. Um, this piece is going to be the main or the top. This one at the bottom is going to be the base of it. But what I am going to do is because this one isn't quite long enough, it does the 158 won't quite fit on it. I am going to use a piece of this and and sort of join it on the ends using this piece as a piece to go over to join them all together. I hope that makes some sense. Right, you will notice I've made the basic part of the Traversa. Now, obviously it needs a lot, of more, a lot more framing out and then attaching to the main baseboards, but that's that part of it done. So how did I go about doing it? Well, what I've done is I've decided I don't need the full width of the board because obviously you're going to need a lot of space behind and a lot of space in front of the board to actually operate it now whilst i can bring the board forward um, i can't go beyond the door frame as i've explained so what did i do i've i had this piece of board anyway and i can get uh, five tracks on this comfortably um, six at a push but five will work beautifully so you might also notice this piece and that is because I've got this extra section because it wasn't quite long enough. So I've just added that little bit and then stuck, glued and pinned this board all the way along. Okay, hopefully you can make that out. So that runs down, runs down the full length underneath. Now, if your board is the right length, it doesn't matter. You really don't have to do that. Um, I wasn't prepared to go and buy another piece of board the right length for that when that would just do. I mean, even if it was on the main layout, it really wouldn't make the slightest jot of difference. Scenery would soon cover that. So next part of it was then I marked the centre point all the way along down the back. The full length. OK, and then it's now time to take the runner. Sorry, I sound a bit pigeon English there, didn't I? 
Right, these are the runners. Um, I've chosen the shortest ones purely because um, I don't, I didn't think the bigger ones would be necessary. Um, so I've put them on that way round. Okay, so th this part here is the top. So you, what you need to do is to then center that. Now, if I put that, so it's closed up. If I put that on there like that, you can see it is pretty much the same length as this bottom piece. Now that's more by luck than judgment, but as long as it's centered that way, okay? So you've got a central hole on this particular type so that the center point um, would have to be lined up with that central line that you've just marked on. And then sliding it forwards like that, screw it in through those varying points and then slide it back the other way and screw some more in that way. I've identified my track is going to come out at this point here. So, I mean, I haven't put it on, but I've got a cent, I imagine there's a center line there. So what I've done, you can see on here, there's a mark. Now it's gonna be difficult to actually get in to see this bit, but if I put that on the edge of the board just like that so the board is actually lined up excuse me the board is lined up from end to end front to back i can now see where the center line of that's going to come okay so what you do then take the runners to the far end out as far as you can so obviously the board will be on here and then you've got these arrows Make sure all the arrows are the right way round before you start screwing them on, otherwise it won't work. Okay, I've now screwed, put the first set of screws on at all three points, and you may just be able to notice there the arrow in there, and that's lining up with the edge of that line on each of those. It is a bit difficult to see, but hopefully you can see what I mean. Now, my next job is to now slide this across, which I'm not gonna do on camera, uh, because it's just so much easier to, to do that um, two-handed whilst it's at this stage. And the whole point of it is try not to move it. If you do move it, the you need to make sure that these runners are parallel to the edge of the board. And you do that, obviously, by measuring. Now, I know this isn't um, the right way around. I appreciate it's at the wrong end of the scale here. But even so, you can still get an idea even by putting your finger there of how far that is, what measurement that comes to, and then just take it to the same distance at the other end. That's assuming you do move it, but it's worth just checking that afterwards. Okay, so I'll slide it across and I'll come back to you. And there it is. So I've now just put these extra screws in. And like I said, just make sure that these are absolutely parallel 90 degrees to the outside edge, otherwise it won't work. Right, I'll show you the upshot of that. Now, all I've done is I've rested this on again. So that will then slide across like that. So you can see the tracks will line up or the parts of the board will line up. I'm trying to do this with uh, like that. So it will work really, really well. Just show you this as well. I've got the traverser upside down. So that's the bit that goes to the near side of the board, this end. And what I want to do is put a handle on. So I found I've got that. Um, it's not in perfect condition, there's a couple of scratches on the top, but that would be absolutely perfect for what I want. So I've marked on the centre line of here. So that's from the edge of either end. And I've found this piece of um, ply. I've drilled four holes and countersunk them and drawn another centre line there. So that will then glue and screw onto that. And then at the appropriate point, which I need to decide. So I need to find the center of that distance from about halfway back there, draw a line across. That will give me the line to mark those two onto. I center the two holes there and drill two holes, which are probably looking about five mil and then screw that up from the bottom. Okay, I'll get that done and I'll show you that finished. There you, go. you can see I've put this plate, this board on here now and um, I've located the handle um, to do that. I know it's nothing to do with railways, but um, 
if you put the bolt, one bolt in and locate it into the back of the thread on the handle, then put the other one in, just locate it, you'll find that they both go in easily. If you drive one bolt home and then put the other one in, hoping to locate it, you may find it's just like half a mil off or something like that. So always do that and then the wood will give accordingly. There you go, all done. And that's very smooth. I think something like this does need a handle. Right, blimey, this has taken quite a while. Now, as you can see, I've completed the framing out on the uh, traverse section. And I've also brought down one of the cube units from upstairs underneath Piccadilly. And the reason for that is because I think this would be useful for storage, but also for supporting the layout. Now I've gone, I've put these runners either side, and as you can see, they pretty much line up with the runners that I've put on, on the baseboard. Um, actually just there, you might just be able to see them sticking out. So this just needs to go that way a tad, but also I've made these two units to go at either end. So this, this draw unit will support the, the majority of the layouts. And obviously the two by one will be quite strong in its own right. But then these legs will go one at the far end just down there and the shorter one will go underneath the traverse unit. OK, so hopefully once that's all screwed on, that should be quite nice and tight. OK, um, it has taken quite a long time to do that. And you might think, well, what have I made that from? It's um, it's an old single bed, which um, was in the room where Piccadilly was and um it became bluntly obvious that it, I'd need to get rid of it. So I thought, well, I might as well use the wood. Um, and the wood was more valuable to me than um, just taking it to the tip. So there's probably about, I don't know, 20 pounds of wood there, if not. if So I've saved myself that much at least, haven't I? So anyway, I'll get all that put together and put up. And hopefully you'll start to see it in its pretty much final position. I'll catch you in Well, there. I can finally say... <laughs> The baseboards are pretty much done and you can see the legs are in place now at both ends excuse the bike and I've got that cube unit in there and you might be thinking well how am I going to get to the track well just take you down the top's been removed so I can easily access the track and those piece those rails at the top there there and their line up, well, well, they certainly line up with one of those parts anyway. All right, so I've also done, excuse me, moving about. The traverser is done as well, so that moves. And do you know, I think I might be able to get six tracks on there. In fact, I'll lay the track out and, and I'll have a quick look and I think I might call this video at that point, but we'll see. Well, there you go. You can see I've literally just laid it on. It's not fixed in any way and obviously it would need cutting, but I can get six tracks on there easily. And so I'm really, really pleased about that. And I think with some kind of bolt mechanism uh, to make sure that the trains go over the join in the boards, I think that will work absolutely beautifully. So really, really pleased about that. Um, I think I'm going to call it a night for today's activities. I've built all the frame today and um, yeah, so I can start laying some track tomorrow. Yay! Anyway, I just thought I'd add this little bit on to the end. Um, I have moved the this unit so it does line up with the runners underneath. I'll take you down so you can see that runner lines up there and also that one. So the, the uh, rails across now are resting on the unit. And I've also, if I take you around the other way, just rearranged some of the things in the room. So the bike's now that side, vibrating machines more in the middle now. And on a very temporary basis, I've just put the overlift track there. Just gives me a little bit more space to get to the layout. Anyway, that's that's only going to be there until this is up and running. And um, and when I need to run something in, I'll either get a rolling road eventually, or I can soon put this out again just to run something in all right anyway one final look where we are at the moment 
and I'll catch you again. The next video will be laying the underlay, preparing the points and getting some track down. Speak to you soon.